What about uh, Teddy Renner? 10 time world champ, I think. Two time gold medalist at the Olympics, two times bronze medalist at the Olympics. Probably the most dominant judoka ever. Is he in the running? What do you think about that guy? I think he's a, a freak of nature, Teddy. You know, if you look at the size, just how big he, how tall he is, how big he is, how physical he is of a specimen. Like I sat next to him on a bus <laughs> and like his legs are literally yeah. the size of my waist. Yeah. Like when you sit next to him and just look at the size, he's a big man, you know? So obviously to win 10 world titles in the sport of judo, I mean, it, that's uh, that's almost an incomprehensible feat uh two-time olympic champion again um but you know that puts him in one of the maybe 10 or 12 people to ever do that in the history of the, of the sport so he's definitely got to be in the running for for the best but you know technically i don't think he's as technical as some of the other um in terms of pure judo finesse, finesse technique you know it's he's powerful he's explosive he's dominant he's strong um Teddy also grips really, really well, which makes him uh, that much tougher to beat because a lot of times heavyweights, especially in the heavyweight division, a lot of them just grab the gi and they go, you know, man to man and, and judo to judo and take shots at each other. And that's why a lot of them end up getting beat. But Teddy's in control, like positionally, he stays in really good position mm -hmm. and he controls his opponent the whole fight. So they really don't have a chance against them. He doesn't give them a chance to beat him, which is why he's been so dominant. But he's not really stalling. So, I mean, he does have a really nice uh, Osorogari, this uh, mm -hmm. backward trip, outside trip, in case people don't know. I mean, he, he has just like technically pretty good throws and for heavyweight. Yes. Heavyweights can be sometimes messy mm -hmm. with their uh, judo. He's pretty t technical and uh, clean in the execution of his big throws, but um, a lot of that probably has to do with the dominant gripping that he does. It's not defensive gripping, it's offensive gripping, but the dominant gripping. 100%. He, he, he controls the grips, he controls the movement of the match as a result of that, and, and then he creates his own openings. So, I mean, as a for a heavyweight, phenomenal technique, yes. Um, and what you said, messy, I'd like to call it sloppy, right? Sloppy. A, lot of, a lot of the yeah. uh, heavyweights tend to be sloppy. They've fallen on the ground a lot. It's hard to move somebody that weighs 350 pounds. You know, it's hard to get that body moving and, and just with a simple uh, pull motion. So um, he's definitely found a way to do it. But he's also, I don't know, six foot eight. Yeah. You know, he's probably weighs 140 kilos. You know, he's a big boy. And, but he had this winning streak of just, uh, I don't know how long, but like over 100 matches. And he lost at this uh, Olympics that we just went through the 20, I don't even know what to call it, 2021 Olympics. Mm -hmm. I don't know the proper terminology right. tokyo 2020 is what okay 2020 it, yeah. all right so he lost to uh tamerlan bashev i mean it's always sad to see a sort of greatness come to an end it's like uh Karelin in wrestling and greco-roman mm -hmm. did you shed a bit of a tear to see greatness go or um like or is it just the way of life um, I mean, how, what did you think about sort of this dominance, this run of dominance being stopped? I think, I mean, it, it's obviously sad to see. I love seeing champions succeed, um, especially people that, that are good people. And I think Teddy's a good person. You know, I mean, I think there's some arrogant champions that everybody would like to see lose just because they don't want to deal with their, um, you know, their personality or, but, and I think, but I think Teddy's a very humble champion. You know, he's, he's a people's champion. You know, he's. I think he's been privileged and he makes good money from the sport of judo and the French Federation has taken care of him well. So he's a, he's a lifelong judo icon. Um, so it's sad to see somebody like that get beat, especially when this could have been, you know, his, his third Olympic title and, um, you know, just become, put him in infamy, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was sad to see, but I think, you know, every athlete goes through it, right? I mean, you, you it's just, that's what the Olympics is all about. You, the great ones fall sometimes. And um, especially in judo, right. it's, it's like so, like the margin of error. I mean, the, I guess the, uh, the other question I want to ask here is in your sense, how difficult it is to not lose for s so long? It seems like in judo, like a little mistake and it's over. There's no, you, there's no coming back. And Epon means it's over. 
So how difficult is that? Is it- it's hard to stay that dominant without question. First of all, when you are when you are the entire world is is training against you just to beat you. Right. They're studying yeah. every single movement. They're they're studying patterns. They're they're trying to break it down and find a flaw in your game. So everybody's hunting for you when you're the best in the world, especially at the Olympics. That's that's the that's the one to beat you at. So everybody's focused on you. And then there's an incredible amount of pressure on that athlete to perform. You know, mm-hmm. you carry the flag for your country, you know, when you're in opening ceremonies sometimes, you know, there's all spotlight is on you. Um, and it's particularly hard when things don't go well early. You know, in other words, when you're expected to win and then all of a sudden now you're in a hard fight and it's not going the way you want, that, that pressure, the one who's the favorite feels the pressure the most at the Olympics. And that's why I think the other ones are able to win it. I've actually never gotten a chance to listen to Teddy Renner sort of explain uh, his ideas behind his judo. Like, I wonder what his mental game is like, because I think his English is pretty not very good. And so, um, and I just haven't seen good interviews, but it's always fascinating to, there's certain great athletes that are also great thinkers and speakers, like um, the Satya brothers in wrestling, Again, not meaning that that's on my to-do list, 100%. <laughs> I'm going to uh, Dagestan and talking to them because they're brilliant. But to be able to sort of, um, maybe after retirement, to, to think back, what were the systems involved, both on the technical, the training side, and then the uh, mental side. Because like to stay that dominant, just like you're saying, everybody's studying to beat you. And, and the heavyweights are just these powerful dudes. <laughs> so, so to be able to control them with your game and like the game that everybody knows is coming is, I don't know. I don't know what's behind that, but there's got to be, um, it feels like m- the mental game is exceptionally important. I think a lot of people underestimate just how important that that side is. Ment- being mentally prepared for victory, mentally prepared to be the best, to stay the best. Um, there's nobody that's weak-minded that <laughs> they can accomplish that. You know, it, it's it's 100% confidence and belief in yourself. 